As I get older, the days, weeks, and years seem to just fly by. Like, I blink and a couple of months have passed. And there have been a couple of movies in recent years that have taken a look at that exact thing, typically trying to provide some commentary on slowing down and then savoring the moment. Well, Netflix has a new Italian film called Still Time that feels very familiar and similar to these types of stories. But is it worth checking out? Dante has a beautiful relationship with his girlfriend Alicia, but he has a bad one with time. Absorbed by the many commitments of his daily life, he always arrives late and has the impression that his life is flowing too quickly. But what happens when he wakes up the next day and finds himself a year ahead? Dante realizes he has been catapulted into a waking nightmare. For some explicable reason, he is living an accelerated life in which he has no memory or control. This is a romantic comedy that has a hefty dose of melancholy that goes along with the romance and comedy. Now, we've certainly seen this story before. I mean, there have been at least two other Netflix movies that have a main character who goes to sleep and wakes up on the same day, but one year ahead, and then also with no memory of any time that's passed. For still time, Dante doesn't have to go to sleep for the time to jump ahead. His time leaps a year every few hours, causing confusion, anxiety, even a little mental instability. Now, I love a lot of the editing in this movie. There are some wonderful transitions where Dante will bend over in front of a mirror and when he pops back up, his appearance has changed. Or he'll reach for something and then as he reaches again, the situation has changed because he's lost yet another year. The story is a sad one at its core because we watch this dude who really believes that if he just works hard for a while, he'll then have more time later to spend doing the things that he wants, not realizing that in the meantime, the days are just slipping by. The emotional beats of this hit pretty hard and made me a little hesitant to dive into it because I like my romantic comedies to all have happy endings. I mean, they may not be realistic, but if they provide some positive escapism, then I'm all good. But I became hooked by the story. Now, Dante, while he's not an overwhelmingly cheerworthy character, he does have a lot of charisma, and even though he messes up a ton and makes decisions that really cause me to shake my head in disbelief and disagreement, he also effectively and convincingly conveys his shock and bewilderment at what he's experiencing. And we can see small change beginning to take shape, but he doesn't really know how to fully commit and make changes permanent. So much of this is very predictable and obvious. I mean, it's a lot like a Groundhog's Day scenario, where a character has to learn something so that then the cycle can be broken. But in these time jump stories, that's not always the case. Even when the character learns what they're supposed to and enacts change, it's often too late, and we're just left then with sadness and the disappointment of reality. This movie is slightly longer, I think, than it needs to be, at about an hour and 50 minutes. But there's not a ton that I think that should be cut, especially because in a lot of the shorter scenes, there's wisdom that's imparted from side characters that really gives some contemplative gut punches to Dante, and then to us. Now, I really did enjoy the message within the film of slowing down and taking today as it is, rather than worrying about yesterday or stressing over tomorrow that's not even happened. There's also a storyline that involves Dante's father, and while this is important to help us understand why Dante works like he does and what he's motivated by, this arc of the story felt thin. There are touching moments to the interactions, but it also felt like we could have gotten a lot of the same points from just some lines of dialogue, especially because the story doesn't dive headlong into their relationship. We just get tiny bits on two or three occasions. The movie can be a stressful watch at times, especially as we watch Dante's relationship with Alicia. They are so great together, but because he's not present much of the time, a wedge forms. And there are some wonderful sequences that help to illustrate the hurt and the distance that's being created. Even when Dante is being confronted with these, I mean, he's still very slow on the uptake. I just wanted to slap him as he just resisted the solutions and the information that would actually help him. Eduardo Leo plays Dante and he crushes it when it comes to confusion, sadness, frustration, and bafflement. I mean, it's hard not to feel some sympathy for the character, even though we know that he's a prisoner of his own device if I can't quote the Eagles. He's created his own situation, and the question is whether or not he's gonna break out of it. And I'm really glad that despite all the melancholy that the movie contains, there's still happiness and joy that's included also. There are very sweet moments between Dante and several other characters, I mean, not just Alicia. And I'm also happy that the movie, it ends on a positive note. Now, it may not be the ending I necessarily wanted, but I wasn't left in the bell jar all down and depressed. The production designs are really well executed, and like the transitions with Dante as he leaps through time, the sets also seamlessly transition to create a very smooth but disconcerting visual as we realize another year has disappeared. And the soundtrack is also amazing. There's this rendition of Only You by Yazoo. It, ah, haunting, it's so effective in the scenes that it plays over. 
So while this story and presentation aren't unique, this is probably one of the best that I've seen, capturing a charismatic protagonist who is believably struggling with change caught up in his busyness so that even when he recognizes things are going awry, he can't quite grasp what he needs to do to fix it. Eduardo Leo is wonderful as Dante, making me feel and root for him despite his shortcomings. The relationship angle is sweet and touching, making me laugh but also wince at the impending sadness that naturally comes about. And even though there is a lot of predictability, the narrative still manages to deliver some big gut punches. The message of the story is straightforward, and it might be slightly preachy, but it's effective and meaningful, showing us the consequences of a busy life, but still providing hope when all's said and done. If you're going to choose a story about time slipping by, this is certainly one of the better ones to engage with. There's brief sex, no nudity, some profanity, and no violence. I give still time three and a half out of five couches. So are there any melancholic romantic comedies that you could recommend to me? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.